Father Thomas, and welcome to MonkWorks. Uh, while I was home for a couple of weeks during the Christmas vacation, uh, the abbot asked if I would build a electronics cabinet for the monastery. The majority of the build uh, consists of about a sheet and a half of three-quarter inch plywood and then some oak uh, shelving that we used to have in our old library. Uh, first thing I need to do is break down the oak plywood. And one of the things I learned a long time ago when doing a build is to label all the parts. Now you can do it in pencil, but I personally prefer to do it with chalk. Uh, chalk comes off rather easy. You don't have to worry about the grooves that a lead pencil would lead. Because of the design of this cabinet and the amount of plywood I had to work with, uh, one of the shelves needed to be cross-cut. And when I need to do a cross-cut, I typically like to put down a little bit of masking tape uh, on that particular cut on the show side in order to uh, minimize any potential chip out or breakage that might happen on the veneer. After cutting everything to length, uh, then on the side pieces, I wanted to give it a little bit of a decorative curve, and so I'm just kind of drawing that out. And since I'm doing two at the same time, um, I'm kind of taping them together. Uh, on hindsight, I probably should have used more tape than just two times around. Uh, later on, I do go back and add some more uh, because there was a little bit of slippage, uh, but that wasn't too big of a problem because I was able then to sand it out. If you don't have access to a spindle sander, it's not the end of the world, as you can see. You can get a drum sanding kit fairly inexpensively from any hardware store. And so that's what I'm using in this particular project. And I sanded it as good as I could uh, with the machine. And now I'm going to take it over and do a little bit of hand sanding as well, just to kind of give it that final finesse and to get out any little uh, ridges that I could feel with my hand. I certainly don't think of myself as a woodworking snob, but this is the first time that I'm using pocket hole joinery in a project. I decided to use it because I only had a limited amount of time uh, to build this project, and the one thing that this particular jig and this type of joinery lends itself to is speed. And so I was very quickly able to get everything uh, done that I needed in order to join all the pieces together. At this point, I'm doing what I would with any traditional joinery, which is laying out where the shelf would go. And so if I was going to cut a dado to hold the shelf, I would do, be do, doing the same thing, laying out exactly where I want it to be. And then I'm taking a straight edge. I'm just using a, another cutoff piece of plywood uh, for this purpose, is using the factory edge, and simply marking the line. And then I can take my shelf, my first shelf, and using a hand screw clamp is kind of a third hand to help me hold things up. After I make sure everything is lined up, I can begin to insert the screws. With the one side secure, now I can flip it over and insert the other one. Once again, lining up with that line that I had drawn previously. In order to keep everything balanced and not have it tip over on me, I'm using one of the other shelves as a prop just to hold it up while I screw in the other side. I think one of the big problems people have with pocket holes is that it is a type of exposed joinery and it's not necessarily one that is very pleasing to the eye. And so in order to handle this, what I've decided to do is to make my shelves an inch and a half thick. And there's a design element that I'm going to be working into it uh, in order to accommodate the larger shelves. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just simply gluing one shelf, uh, one shelf piece to the other in order to hide the pocket holes. One of the differences between pocket hole joinery and a traditional dado joint is that when I was laying out the position of the shelves, I didn't put the second one in. And so as you can see, I'm using a spacer in order to mark out where the next one is going to be going. Now that I have the two shelves secure, I'm working on installing the front piece. And again, it's being held with pocket holes since it will be on the interior and no one's ever going to see the inside of the cabinet anyway. Now if someone else was building this, they might want to put doors in here, but for this particular piece, the doors were unnecessary because the only thing this cabinet was going to hold is a few electronics, and the main thing was to get some height in order to hide the cables that led from the television to the cable box. So it's really about height and not storage. Once again, I'm making sure everything's flat, everything's lined up, and then I'm able to put in the screws in order to hold it all together and hold it all into place. And it's at this point that I think everything's starting to come together and it's really starting to look like what I wanted it to. 
Because it's a fairly simple box, what's going to set this particular piece apart is the design that I have for it, and part of that then requires it to be stained with this red oak, dark red oak stain. Uh, one of the things that you'll notice is I'm leaving some of the areas unstained, and that's on purpose. The edges of the plywood are all going to be covered with solid oak banding, and also the interior area of the drawer because it still needs to be thickened up a little bit in order to give it the one and a half inches just like the two shelves. Because I'm going to be laying out a design on top of the stain, I needed to make sure I gave the stain plenty of time to dry. Now the direction said to give it 24 hours before applying any sort of top coat. Uh, but because I was going to be putting a design on it, I wanted to give it more time. So I actually let it sit for about three full days to make sure that all the oils in the stain were completely dry so that when I'm applying tape not to pull up any of the stain that's already been laid down. Uh, this project seems to have a few firsts in it because this is the first time I've ever used chalk paint as well in order to add the design. I don't typically use a lot of paint in my projects, but this one seemed to go on pretty well and I like the results of it. So if I ever was going to be using paint again, I might think again about using some chalk paint. I'm going to be making the trim out of some solid oak. When we were renovating the monastery, we moved our library and we went from these solid oak shelves to some metal ones, and so I was able to save a few of these boards, and so that's what I'm using here. For the most part, it's pretty flat, but it's still going to need some work, and so I'm putting it through the planer a few times in order to get the curve out of it. I simply cut it down into strips, and now I'm just cutting to length and installing it then onto the cabinet. When installing it, I'm only using glue and clamps because I don't want those little divots that occur when you nail it into place because I'm not going to be doing anything else with this wood and so any putty that I might be using would very easily stand out in this project. It adds a little bit more time to the process, but overall I think it's worth it. The top of the cabinet is also getting some trim but it's wider in an inch and a half. Because of the design that's on the top, I also thought it'd look better if I didn't use a traditional miter cut, and so I have the ends butted up against each other so that the end grain is visible. I actually found it easier when doing the measuring for the links here because I could just use a piece of the scrap material as a placeholder and then I could get very accurate cuts. Once I have all the pieces together, all I had to do is add a little bit of glue and then clamp it on up. Because there are no doors or internal shelves, there's not any place for the back panel to be securely attached to. And so the way that I'm getting around it is simply cutting up some small blocks, gluing them in place, and then tacking the quarter inch plywood to the back of it. And it should provide plenty of stability for the cabinet. The last major bit of construction is to create the drawer for the cabinet. And what I'm using here is just some very wide finger joints, which I'm cutting out on the saw. I'm not using a jig for this. I find it sometimes easier, if I'm going to be using these wide fingers anyway, to just kind of measure out one side, cut them out, and then flip the pieces over, and then draw out the other fingers. It will require some fine adjustment, and because it was only one drawer and had the large fingers, it wasn't difficult to do without it. And once the finger joints are done, it's just a matter of cutting a small groove in order to fit in the plywood bottom. And then I'm just gluing everything together, uh, then I'll check it for square. Now I did find this to be a difficult glue up to do, and part of that did have to do with some inconsistencies in the cutting process, but after a little tweaking, everything seemed to work out fine. Normally when attaching a top to a cabinet to a table, I like to use clips. Uh, but in this particular case, I thought it would be very easy for the clips to be seen, and that was one of the reasons why I was covering up the pocket holes. I didn't want the joinery to be seen, and so I decided that probably the best means of joining the top to the cabinet was through dowels. And so I made a small one-time use jig in order to put everything together. some improvised clamps to the top 
and then for the most part, except for attaching the drawer front and applying the varnish, this project is done. The drawer front was easy to make, and so I'm not showing it here. It's just simply measuring out uh, the size that's needed, cutting up the board, and attaching it with glue, and then adding the hardware. It's a little more modern than most of the stuff that I've done in the past, but given the fact that the monastery was built in the 1950s, it does have that mid-century modern look to it, and so I thought this style might work well here. And I think overall it does. And so I hope you enjoyed watching this video, uh, and I invite you to check out some of the other work that I've done. Thanks for watching, and may God bless you.